Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with a quick review on the RTX 3070 for use with Redshift. So I just got my 3070 in the mail yesterday. Fortunately, in New Zealand, they are in short supply, but not as short a supply as other parts of the world. So I was able to secure one. So I've got myself the Gigabyte Vision um, overclocking version, which has got a boost clock speed of uh, 1815 I haven't overclocked it so it's all sort of at its base um, boost speed for all the comparisons that I'll be doing for this video but I've upgraded from a 1070 so my computer has not had an upgrade in a little while um, so I'm going to be comparing my 1070 speeds on render with my um, 3070 speeds on render and I'll also be using the RT X uh, boost that's available for Redshift as well. So let's dive in. I've got a couple of scenes prepared for us to have a look at and um, have a look at the different results that I got. Okay, so the first scene we'll look at here is from the Bum Monsters short that came out earlier this year. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's available to watch on the channel. Uh, this is a fairly simple cartoon style animation. Uh, the total frame count was 1350 overall, and on the 1070, our render time per frame was 51 seconds from my reference frame, which is uh, frame 830 which is in the middle and it's got both characters in it and it's a pretty good representation of one of the longer render times that I saw. Um, if we have a look here in the Maya scene you see that I've got quite a few lights set up as well as a big overhead and a large sort of studio lighting setup. And um, these lights are mainly light linked for the characters to have rim lights and that sort of thing on them as well as having some cast shadow lights and things so it's not a crazy complex setup. I didn't actually end up doing any compositing with this one. I was considering just uh, doing a shadow catcher for the characters and, and rendering out the background in one frame, but it didn't end up actually making too big a difference for render times. So we just did it all in camera. So this is the reference frame, which is 830, and just going to go through a couple of the settings that I used. So the bucket rendering size was 256, um, and the GI was two GI bounces with a primary engine on brute force and the secondary on irradiance point cache with the point cloud uh, sampling one, uh, one sample per pixel. Our output was uh, minimum samples of four, max of 64 with an adaptive error of 0.01 and the resolution was 1920 by 1080. So when we were rendering this on the 1070, our render times were coming out at roughly 51 seconds on average. So we were looking at about a render time for the entire project of about 19 hours roughly, give or take, because some of the earlier frames are rendered out a lot quicker. Now our results when switching to the 3070, what we found was we were getting render times of 26.4 seconds. So essentially halving our render time to roughly eight hours, meaning that we could actually render this whole project out overnight, which would be excellent. And to further improve that render time, we if we enabled RTX mode, which you can uh, access under the experimental options on Redshift in the system tab, um, which is this button here, what we found was we got a render time of 24 seconds. So two seconds shaved off uh, the initial render time with the 3070. So that's pretty much it for Bum Monsters. We'll move on to the Dark Wake EP sessions. So we rendered four different videos for each track for the Dark Wake EP. And um, we'll look at the first one, which was the more complex of the four. Okay, so here is the Dark Wake scene. There is a fairly complex lighting setup because all the lights were tied to music triggers. Um, and they were essentially what the music video is built off. So there's a lot of glass materials in this, so we're getting lots of refraction um, and we're getting lots of reflections as well. So there is no caustics in this scene, however, so it's not, it's not making a, that big a difference on that side of things. However, it was a fairly intense render and our final renders probably weren't as clean as I'd like, but given the time budget, um, we we had to make some sacrifices so far as um, quality went. And the final 
video overall I'm still very happy with. It's just some parts of the reflections I would have liked to have seen a bit more smooth, but this is the best you could do. Now, um, I should also mention that I'm using optics denoising. I have been for all of these uh, videos so far, so just to assume that for everything that I talk about. Okay, so let's have a look at some of our render settings here. Our GI was brute force and radiance point, point cache again, uh, with uh, one single bounce for our uh, GI bounces and brute force had two rays. A radiance point cache had one sample per pixel and we were using a buck size of 256 as well as a sampling size of 4 to 256. So our render times on the 1070 were 28.2 seconds as an average. So 28 seconds, um, our overall render time at that speed was 48 hours roughly. I think it was a little bit quicker than that because some of the earlier parts of the video are a little bit quicker on render times and some other parts are a little bit uh, quicker as well. But um, basically we were looking at, you know, um, for 12 hour days of rendering essentially overnight to get the entire thing uh, project rendered up which was fine spread over a week or so it got done fairly easily once it was once it was all ready um, but the main problem was obviously rendering uh, the little test sequences to check that all the lighting and stuff was matching up with our with the music uh, so we did that at a much lower resolution I think we we're just using 540p but even then, because there were so many frames, we were looking at 6,200 frames, uh, it was a long time to even get our test renders out. So the improvements that we saw with the RTX card were really good. Uh, we basically halved the render time down to 14 seconds without RTX enabled. And with RTX enabled, we dropped the render time down by a further second, so down to 13 seconds. So overall, making a difference of about 24 hours in render time. So for us, obviously, that's huge. We could render that basically over two nights if we wished, um, which would just free us up to do a whole lot of other work. So that's really good. Some of you might be thinking, uh, did you get the 1070 in the computer as well to, because uh, you can use multiple GPUs with Redshift at the moment, no. Um, I think that the not being able to use the RTX mode and and probably some of the difficulties that we'd face, as well as having to do a PSU upgrade for the computer, at the moment I don't think it's worth it. I think somewhere down the line I'll probably put another 3070 in, um, but when I do that, it will be a complete system overhaul as well. Obviously, using Render Farm sometimes as well on heavier projects, but for the most part, just being able to do them on the office computer has been a real boon. So moving on from the video for the song Thread, we did the video for the song Return. And this one's interesting because we used photon mapping for this. So it was very fast to render uh, compared to Thread and compared to uh, the other two videos that we did as well. So I wanted to see what sort of differences we saw in time. So for return, it was another fairly simple scene setup, all based around light lights triggered by music and synced with music. Um, though we were using photon mapping for this as all the lights were pointing directly at the camera. So what we found was we were able to get really, really quick render times. And although the total frame count was 3500, we were actually able to render this pretty much overnight as our per frame render time on the 1070 was only 4.5 seconds. So let's have a look at our render settings again here. So again, bucket size 256 on spiral. So we were using photon mapping for primary and secondary rendering engines and our output settings were uh, minimum samples for max 256. In spite of the high sample rate, we were hitting very low render time. So we were looking at 4.5 seconds on average per frame at 3500 frames the total render time was only four hours and 15 minutes or thereabouts switching to the 3070 however we dropped our render time per frame by about a second so about three minutes and 16 seconds without rtx uh, acceleration enabled and with it enabled we dropped it down a further second to 2.17 seconds so essentially we could have rendered this entire video out in two hours using the RTX settings. 
Um, however, when I initially did a frame test on this, what I found was my crashed. Um, but you know what's new um, but I think that was because of the version of Redshift I was using there was some um, issues with a recent build I think it was 0.033 so I rolled it back to 0.031 um, and that fixed all the issues that I was having it didn't affect any of the render times on these videos however um, but uh, it did fix that crash so that's enough of the dark wake videos. Now we'll have a look at a cyberpunk scene that is currently unfinished, but I'm gonna get there and finish it hopefully soon. Now it's definitely unfinished because you can see that I haven't optimized the scene. There's a lot of geometry in the scene. The render times are fairly high because of all the extra geometry and textures and stuff. So once I clean the scene up, I imagine that it's gonna be a little bit lower. Um, because time to first pixel is a little bit long at the moment. However, I'll give you a quick rundown. So the scene is um, incredibly high um, poly at the moment. It's at 14 million verts, so it's way, way, way too high for the single shot that I'm using. But obviously I want all the geometry in the scene for the initial scene setup before I go through and set up a couple of different camera angles and things for the final render. We'll have a look at our render settings. So again, 256 uh, bucket size. Our GI was brute force and irradiance point cache with three bounces, three rays per um, brute force GI, and our irradiance point cloud was one sample per pixel. And finally, we had our samples set to 16 and 32 with depth of field on in camera. Now, um, when I finalize the scene, I won't obviously use the depth of field of the camera. I will probably do it in post with a Z depth blur or whatever. Um, but just as a reference, I added that in as well. So it's sort of a good stress test because generally uh, using depth of field in camera increases your render times. So with the 1070, we were looking at a render time of just under four minutes, three minutes and 56 seconds per frame. This isn't animated at the moment. I'll probably just do some you know, camera pushes and things like that. But when we used the 3070, our render times came down to two minutes and 26 seconds, it dropped further down to one minutes and 51 second with RTX enabled. So a pretty sizable difference again, but roughly halving the speed of, uh, halving the time rather of our render times. So noticeable improvements. That would be improved further again, as I say, by tidying up the scene because it's a bit of a mess at the moment. But I'll get to that as well later on. I've still got a lot of volumetrics to add as well as a bunch of other stuff. So hopefully I'll finish this before the end of the year. It's just been a little pro side project that I've been ticking away at. Okay, so that is the lot. Hopefully you found that useful if you were thinking about getting a 3070 um, and you wanted to know what some real world experience was like. Um, so far I've only had the card for less than 24 hours, but I've just been running some tests and things. Um, I'll be doing some overclocking on it in the near future, I think, uh, and just to see what sort of performance results that I get. If I sort of find that there are only in like the up to 5% improvement range, I probably won't overclock it um, just to extend the life of the car, though they're pretty good nowadays from what I read so far as life expectancy when overclocked. So I'll see how I go um, and maybe I'll do an update video. Let me know if you want to see something like that. Otherwise, um, stick around for the tutorial videos that we do and uh, some more Redshift content coming in the future. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking the link below.